right, the purchase order is in, the factory's made your product, it's ready to ship, it's passed inspection. Now what? How do you get it over to the United States and get it into Amazon or get it into your 3PL or, or your house, your garage maybe, and actually get this thing to start start selling? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can ship stuff from from overseas. Pretty much it's air or sea. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's either by boat or by plane. Um, uh, the donkey doesn't quite make it all the way from, uh, from China to, to the United States. So uh, maybe if you're shipping, though, out of sourcing in Mexico, it might be coming from truck by truck across the, the, the Laredo border in Texas or maybe across the st- Southern California or one of the Arizona borders. Uh, but if in most cases, you're probably going to be manufacturing over in Asia, India, Vietnam, China, Indonesia. That's where most of the, so it's supposed to be coming by sea or air. And so sea is definitely the best way to actually ship things. It's the cheapest, but it's also the slowest. Typically about three to four weeks from Asia over to the United States. Air can be a few days to a week, depending on the, the courier and the, the speed. But the difference is air is is expensive. It's quick, but it's also expensive. It can be anywhere from uh, five to ten dollars per kilo. So a kilo is like two point two pounds. So it can be very expensive to fly stuff by air. So if you've got heavy stuff, unless it's mission critical, um, that you're probably going to want to send this send this by sea. Um, and also air is has two dimensions to it. It has a price based on the dimensions, which is the size, and based on the weight. So those are both factors in the cost. Versus on on sea freight, it's pretty much more of a, a of a dimensions cost. It doesn't matter how much it weighs. It's how many can you fit into one of these big metal 40-foot containers. There's 20-foot containers. There's 40-foot containers. There's 40-foot HQ containers. These are those big shipping containers that you see. HQ means it can store a little bit more. It's slightly slightly taller. But how much can you fit into these 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 containers is basically going to determine the cost. And there's, there's software tools that will actually show you diagrams like how you package your cartons, how you how many can you fit in there? You can do a full container, which you got to fill up the whole thing. Or if you don't fill up the whole thing, you're paying as if you filled up the whole thing. Or you can do a partial container uh, where you, you group your stuff with other suppliers and you, things get commingled together. So every maybe some uh, one third of the container is yours, one third is somebody else's, and one third is somebody uh, another person's. The problem with commingling, uh, and sometimes that's that's definitely the cheapest way to do it. But the problem with commingling is if there's an issue with somebody else's products in there, it can hold up the whole container. So if it gets pulled over for an inspection and they scan it uh, using these big x-ray scanners and something suspicious with somebody else's stuff in the container, it can cause your stuff to get delayed. During COVID, I had something delayed nine months. Uh, it got stuck in a rail yard actually in Chicago. So it got off the ship and they sent it by, by rail car to Chicago to actually just, just have it clear customs in Chicago and then dis- dispersed down to me by just a regular truck. And so Chicago had issues uh, with the, the freight yard, with the rail yard, and it got stuck there for nine months. And it, it, was, it was not fun. Uh, but those, those things can happen. Uh, they can happen by air as well. But typically, um, C is going to be the cheapest way, uh, and that's pretty much what you want to do. You're going to want a freight forward to actually handle this for you. You don't want to be doing this stuff yourself. Um, it... Your factory, if you're doing a small amount of something, you can do what's called DDP, and that's where it's, it's duty and taxes are paid. So basically, it, it, anything less than $2,500 in value can usually come DDP. So that could be by FedEx, it could be by DHL, it could be uh, uh, though, uh, or even by C. You know, my calendars that I print, um, every year we print them in South Korea. Uh, our price in South Korea is about $1.56 per calendar. If I print those in the United States, it'd be about $3.56. 50 cents a calendar, but that dollar 56 includes everything. So that's not just the paper costs and the, and the cost of the, the printing machines. That's the taxes and duties and everything. So it comes to me DDP. And it's about a, you know, it's a hefty order into the 50, $60,000 for, for one of the POs, for example. And, but it comes, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to pay any extra taxes. I don't have to pay any extra duties. They handle the whole process. They coordinate the freight. All I do is I send the purchase order. I send the money. They send me some samples by air. Uh, I sign off on them. They send the whole thing. Comes a month later by sea, and then the day before uh, it's going to be delivered to my warehouse, I get a phone call from the local company saying, "Hey, we got 12 pallets for you. Uh, we're coming tomorrow at three uh, to drop them off." 
uh, that's DDP, so I don't have to pay anything along the way. Most of your Chinese suppliers aren't going to do that. Most of them are going to do what's called XWorks or FOB. XWorks means ba it's EXW. It basically means that everything from the warehouse, from the door, from the dock of the, the manufacturing facility onward, you're responsible for. So that could be the cost to transport it from the factory dock to the to the boat. And then the boat across the sea, all the fees to process it through the ports in, in Los Angeles or Long Beach or wherever it's going. Uh, and then all the, tr the, the train or the truck that's going to take it across the country and get it to you locally and the local delivery. FOB means it's they're going to pay for that from a certain point. So if it's like FOB Shanghai, that means the factory will take the responsibility for getting it from their dock to the port. Or if it's FOB Austin, Texas, for example... That means that they're going to pay for everything from their factory door in China to Austin, Texas. And from once it gets to Austin, Texas, it's my responsibility to pay the what's called the last mile for the local clearance house to actually take it five, ten miles across the city to my my warehouse. Uh, so those those are two of the big terms: FOB and X Works. A lot of times you want to get quotes on both of them when you're getting quotes from your supplier. Um, and your freight forwarder, because the pricing you can you can find, oftentimes find some markup uh, and some savings. Your supplier may do FOB, and they're marketing it up double versus if you just got it X Works from them and did it yourself. So you want to you want to always double check that and and um, and see which one is going to be the best option for you. When you when you're trying to consider whether you to go air or sea, air is great for less than 150 kilos. So a kilo is 2.2 pounds. So that's, what's that, 330 pounds roughly, if I do the math in my head right. Uh, so less than 330 pounds, uh, you, could, you could think about doing air. You're going to pay through the nose for it. Uh, anything over 500 kilos, so over about uh, 1,200 uh, pounds, you're going to want to do by, by sea um, for, for sure. Uh, or you're going to pay crazy, crazy amounts. Remember that you need a customs broker. You can't just show up at the airport or at the dock and pick this stuff up. You need someone to clear this through customs. You have to get bonds. You can get a, a one-time bond for like 80 bucks, or you can get a continuous bond for a year for like $400. It covers all your shipments, but it's basically just a guarantee you're going to pay any taxes or duties. Uh, but your freight forwarder can help you set all that stuff up. Um, you, they will do all the paperwork, all the bill of lading, all the taxing documents. They'll tell you, hey, you owe some tax on this. This is what you owe. Uh, here's our fees for processing the paper for overnighting this, these documents, and they make a little bit of it. Make sure that everything that's coming in from overseas, to the, especially to the United States and to Europe, to has a made in st either printed on the ca carton can table, uh, carton label. Actually, on the product is ideal on the label of the product, and also on the outside of the cartons, the big master cartons, it says made in China, or made in uh, Mexico, or made somewhere. If you don't have that on there, it can get held in customs. So you have to have the, the country of origin on your product, usually on the label and on the actual shipping boxes. Otherwise, you can run into problems. Freight forwarders like uh, Brock, who's going to be talking uh, in one of the modules right in this section, uh, talking more details about freight, are, are great to handle everything for you. So uh, I would highly recommend you use a freight forwarder. If you don't want to use Brock, check out the, the, the Helium 10 directory and, and actually see if there's somebody else in there that, that might work well for you. These guys will just take all the pain out. They, they know the, the best ships. They know the best routes. They know they, they deal with this stuff day in, day out. Freight rates do change. Um, during COVID, they went sky high. They went to you know, $20,000 to $30,000 a container uh, versus a normal times $1,000 to $1,500 a container. You know, when, when the, ha the issues happened in the Red Sea with the, the Houthi rebels, uh, a lot of stuff to Europe. Uh, started going, shot up from $1,500 to $5,000 because they had to take a long way around South Africa instead of going to the Red Sea uh, because of, of the terrorism tax. Uh, other issues, supply and demand can cost a lot. A, a container coming from China to the United States might be $1,500, $2,000, but a container going the other way, uh, because they got to ship those containers back, going from the United States to, to China, the same container might be 300 bucks. Uh, because half of them go, most of them go back empty. So they're just happy to get any kind of money they can off of it. So the rates are, are variable and they change all the time. You can lock in sometimes, lock in the rates, but be, be prepared for rate fluctuations based on world events. Uh, you know, if issues go down with, with China and the US, so the rates could go up. If there's other, another global crisis, another war, 
rates rates can change, so they're they're constantly changing. Um, and so be 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 cognizant of that when you're and build a little bit of buffer in when you're build looking at your pricing, uh, because you might have to absorb some of that pricing. I recommend you use a three PL like Brock's company, like Forskit or someone to handle it because they have a whole system, a whole uh, login where you can the dashboard where you can see like where stuff is and, and and fully track it, and then bring it into a three PL. Maybe in the beginning you're you're working out your garage or your house and you bring it in, you got a shed in the back and you can store it there. At some point, you're going to need storage, and you need a 3PL that's going to handle and process this stuff for you. And then from there, take it straight to Amazon. Now, some people will say, no, you should just ship it directly into Amazon straight from, from China. Save that middle step. I don't recommend doing that because stuff gets damaged in, along the way or stuff gets missing. Um, go into a 3PL as a, as a stop, intermediary stop. They can actually check it, fix any cartons that are messed up or... You don't want to be sending in damaged stuff to Amazon. They, they it, it putting a blemish on your record. So I recommend going to a 3PL first. Um, make sure you always account for your tariffs. We talked about this. Your tariff terminator is a great place to actually uh, check for HS codes and to make sure you're paying the right amount. There's things called anti-dumping that you want to avoid. You know certain things that um, uh, are protected resources like some woods and some metals and stuff. There's it's called anti-dumping fees and those fees can be super high. So you want to make sure your product doesn't have any of that. If you're bringing in certain types of woods, it might have to have certain fumigation requirements, like spray for for beetles, uh, wood beetles, and different things. So make sure you're, you're covered on that. Your freight forwarder should know all that stuff. Make sure uh, that your freight forwarder can provide additional services, or they work with a 3PL. They can do labeling. Uh, they can do combining of shipments. Uh, Skew drops a, a great option for a lot of people. They, they're based in uh, they're an Australian company, but they have offices and uh, warehouses in China. So you can have your local Chinese manufacturer just deliver it to China, to their warehouse in China. And then what they do is they store it in China, so it's cheaper than storing it in the United States. And then they they commingle stuff. So they'll take if you if you make a thousand of your crepe makers, uh, they'll they'll and you need a a hundred of them a, a week to come to Amazon instead of you having to ship all thousand of them over at one time. And have pay storage fees here or pay storage fees to Amazon and have to mess with it. They will label them properly for Amazon with the stickers and everything. They'll put your 100 into a container plus 100 of somebody else plus 200 of somebody else. And so you get the advantage of a, a really cheap price for, for sending stuff in at a low rate and just in time. And they'll, they'll do it every week. They tie into your Amazon accounts and they can just they can just send the stuff in. Just It's like clockwork. And... It's a, it's a really good system in a way to actually save some money. Um, make sure that on the uh, the importer of record, you you have to be the importer of record. Amazon won't be the importer of record if you're shipping directly to them, or if you're shipping from the U.S. into Canada. Amazon won't they won't take responsibility. So you have to be shown as the importer of record when you ship into Amazon from your 3PL. You want to make sure you in most cases you use the negotiated rates from from Amazon to actually do that because their rates are dirt cheap. Um, they basically have uh, uh, freight pricing uh, at single piece rates. Uh, so, like on Amazon, on a UPS box, it might cost you eight to ten bucks to send it in. Versus if you use it on your account, even with heavy discounts, it might be fifteen to twenty five dollars. Anh chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon. Scarlet cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Vì đang tiếp brand với USBTO, từ Helium Hand, từ Jungle Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé. And Amazon will just deduct that from your your payments. Uh, that can be great. And plus, then the responsibility goes on to Amazon too if something goes wrong or gets lost, uh, and they have to reimburse you for it. Uh, LTL is less than uh, container load. Um, that's can be good for large and bulky items. It's where you have to put it on a pallet and ship it in on pallets. Or if you have a huge amount of stuff going in, it just takes a little bit longer for palletized stuff typically to get checked in at Amazon. So build that into your your time frame. Versus if you're sending UPS single boxes, those usually get checked in a little bit cheaper. So it's a time versus money thing, the way you ship. LTL can actually be a little bit cheaper, for, especially for heavy, bulky items that are shipping in like the UPS ground, even with Amazon's discounted rates. Um, but you just got to choose the shipping method that's best for you and best overall. I recommend you actually get insurance on your shipments because things can happen. You know, ships, containers can fall over in the middle of a rough seas, in the middle of a storm off of a boat. Uh, things can get damaged along the way. Rebels can come on and actually steal stuff or uh, 
a boat can get stuck, uh, like the what's the one that got stuck in the uh, Suez Canal a, a few years ago uh, for like two months blocking the whole canal, and your stuff gets held up. So insurance is pretty cheap. I recommend you get that on your on your sea shipments and your and your air freight shipments too. Uh, there's be careful for errors from your factory where they they put the wrong HS code on the bill of lading, or they put the wrong pricing points. Uh, verify any weights and discrepancies. Um, make sure you that they'll send you the bill of lading, which is like an official document of what's in the shipment, uh, and make sure everything on there it matches up and there weren't any typos because that can affect your two duties, can affect your affect a whole bunch of stuff. Insurance claims, if you have an insurance claim, so make sure that stuff is, is there. The risk of theft is pretty small, especially in, in Asia, but some countries like Africa or Central America, theft can be an issue. You have some of the cartels in Mexico that will intercept uh, trucks coming across before they get to the border and make them either pay a ransom or they'll take the stuff. Um, so there, there can be some of that, so you can have insurance to get some of that. Always keep in mind seasonality stuff. Quarter four, it, it, the rates always go up and Time lag, time frames can get longer, so always get ahead of quarter four, which is the October to December time frame or the holiday season. Always keep in mind things like Chinese New Year. During Chinese New Year, things will shut down for two to three weeks. That's typically end of January, into February every year. Other holidays can affect things too, so you got to build that into your production times, your lease cycles. Also remember that you have on, on Amazon, if you if you have excess inventory, you're going to have long-term storage fees, so anything that's over 180 days. Amazon really docks you really hard for, for storing that stuff. Uh, they like to charge for the dust that's gathering on your product. So make sure you don't overstock. Or if you have overstocked, you get that stuff out of there, but either by liquidating it, by donating it, or by uh, running some special deals, lightning deals, or deal of the day to try to blast that stuff out. Also remember your check-in times uh, when, you're, when you're sending stuff to Amazon. Seasonality, the, the warehouse can make a difference. We've talked about some of this in the past. Typically, UPS ground is faster than truck shipping to get things in. So if something's time sensitive, send it through through UPS ground into, into, into Amazon. Uh, you can't self-deliver to Amazon unless you're authorized. So you can't just pull up your station wagon and, and, and dump it over at their warehouse. It's down the street from you. Uh, you you're going to... Uh, they, they won't allow that uh, for safety reasons. Uh, so you have to be authorized to actually deliver it. And you could get that authorization if you have a, a box truck for your business in your warehouse down the street, but you just have to get authorized. Um, you can track everything in Seller Central, all your inbound stuff, uh, see what's in stock, what's reserved, what's being checked in. Um, we talked about what's FC transfer. That's where Amazon is taking it from where you shipped it and they're transferring it to other warehouses. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that you have to keep in mind as well. Some of the terms that you're going to hear when it comes to shipping that are called INCO, ter INCO terms, I-N-C-O terms. Um, there's 11 different ones, but the three main ones that you need to be aware of are called XWorks or E-X-W. That, uh, that means it's you're paying for everything from the dock uh, to the rest of the way, from the factory's dock all the way to the port, all the way over, you're paying for that. There's called free on board or FOB. That means it's the, the, the price that you got is is for the product cost plus any local charges to get it to the port for them to take it from their dock over to the shipping port. And then DDU uh, or DDP, uh, DDU is du duty delivery duty unpaid. So that's the product plus the shipping cost. You have to pay the duties. And there's DDP, which I, like I talked about with the calendars earlier, where everything is paid. It's all part of the price. Uh, so I like I said earlier, I always recommend you get XWorks quotes uh, so you can see if they're marking that up. Sometimes there's a big markup for them just to take it to the dock, and they're making hundreds or thousands of dollars on that. And a lot of times, if you just agree to take that over with your freight forwarder, you can save some money. Always comp compare your rate from your forwarder and ask for a, a, a price from your supplier. Sometimes your supplier might have some special rates or government-subsidized rates in China, uh, and they, they may have a little bit lower rate, and you can either decide to use that supplier or you can negotiate with your current freight forwarder and say, hey, I've got this other rate, can you can you match it? And maybe they will, or maybe they won't. Um, so so those are some of the, the key INCO terms that you, that you need to know. One of the things that also matters is your factory location. You know, in China, a lot of the big factories are on along the coastlines. They're in Shanghai, uh, Ningbo, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, which are all uh, Hong Kong, all near ports. But if, you, if you're working uh, with something that's interior of the country, or like in India, for example, some stuff might be in Mumbai, I'm mean, sorry, not Mumbai, in Delhi, or up in that region, they got to truck it all the way across the country and get it to a port. 
So that's going to add time and cost. So always, always think about these local charges and how they're going to affect you. And it may make a decision, uh, a factor in, in choosing where you manufacture, where you ship because of the delays in time and, and the extra cost and risk of getting it there. A couple of th- just a couple quick points to, to actually emphasize when you're dealing with your suppliers is, is your out, outer packaging. You know, the boxes that they ship the stuff in, uh, in China, especially they, they like to use this cheap, cheap cardboard. It's like this thin piece of crap, smelly cardboard. You've probably seen it when you got something from Amazon, it just rips apart like shreds. I don't like shipping in that stuff. I like to have them actually use double walled or triple walled boxes. So I will actually pay extra to make it a double or triple walled, which is a, a sturdy, heavy box. And another thing I, I do a lot of times is I ask my suppliers, if I, especially if I have a custom box, like I had an ab roller and had this custom color box, I'll tell them to, to print me a hundred extra boxes and ship those over with the everything, just a hundred flat boxes of my product so that uh, if some boxes get damaged along the way from a, a carton getting torn on the corner or something, I can replace them and have a, a perfect product. I also can use those for returns. Sometimes Amazon customers will, will buy something and return it unused, but the box got damaged because of the shipping process back and forth to Amazon and back to me. I can just take all the brand new parts that they never used out, put them in a brand new box, and then resell that on eBay or, or somewhere as a, as a brand new item. Uh, so I like to do that as well. Always, always on your master cartons, the size of these cartons, uh, just like on your products, the dimensions matter on how much you can actually get into a container. Your your freight forwarder or your your supplier should be able to calculate this and actually optimize. You know, maybe instead of you ordering a thousand units, you should order a thousand and sixty-two units because a thousand sixty-two units will perfectly max out a, a, a say a twenty-foot small container and then you can optimize, it's, it's basically, it, it saves you on landing costs. So instead of dividing the shipping cost by a thousand, you're dividing it by a thousand sixty-three per unit. So you end up saving, you know, a few hundred bucks or something. So little things like that can make, make a huge difference. Um, there, there's also types of delivery into Amazon. There's what's called SPD or LTL. LTL is more for pallets and you have to have a, a scheduled appointment, SPD is for like the UPS shipments or express, they can just show up and they just dump those things. So that's why the UPS ground stuff is, is a little bit uh, quicker. Um, the ship from address can actually affect where you're shipping to. So if you're manufacturing in China, um, there's some little tricks that you can do to actually, instead of saying that I'm shipping this from Texas, I'm shipping it from a, a warehouse in, in LA because that's where the ship's being unloaded. And then what Amazon will do is they might assign you a warehouse that's closer to Los Angeles, maybe in Arizona or maybe in Nevada or maybe in California somewhere. So you're not having to bring the stuff all the way to Texas and then ship it all the way back over. Uh, by putting your from destination, when you're creating your shipping labels on, on Amazon, you can oftentimes save some money and uh, affect um, the, the speed of delivery uh, and getting this into stock and getting people ordering it. Remember I talked about there's different ways to actually fulfill through Amazon. One is FBA, where Amazon actually stores and fulfills the items. That's what the customers prefer because they trust it to be there in a day or two. Or FBM, which is where you actually are shipping it either from your garage or from your, your 3PL. I recommend you set up both listings, especially if you're having inventory problems, so that you, the, the FBA listing is what's going to dominate, but then if you run out of stock, it'll default over to the FBM listing. And so you can, while you're getting more stock in and you're, you're getting stuff shipped in, you can still actually have a live listing on Amazon. That, that's a way, you know, I have a, a buddy that ha- deals with a, uh, a clay company that sells beauty clays and they constantly are selling out or there's some sort of delay in getting checked in. So they have both FBA and FBM listings. So most of their sales are occurring by FBA, but when the FBA stock runs out or has a long delay, it'll divert over to the FBM. And they just, for a couple of days, they, they have their 3PL or their warehouse ship it in and they can maintain some of that momentum and don't lose a whole lot of momentum. Uh, and so that, that's an option uh, for you as well. There's software like ShipStation that, that will run the FBM for you. There's some sophisticated programs too, but uh, an easy one is, is called ShipStation. Uh, the three, your three PLs might have their own tools that they use, uh, your costs for FBM. Just remember, they're probably going to be a little bit higher. You probably can't negotiate quite the rates or the fulfillment network that Amazon has, uh, where they can consolidate stuff and just deliver stuff so efficiently, so cheap. So factor that in, um, um, and, but more, more than that, just do everything you can to avoid stockouts.
So hopefully this is some some good information for you that's going to help you uh, understand the logistics of actually getting stuff into Amazon. Barack is going to talk to you in one of these other modules here about more details and, and go into some of the nitty gritty. So hopefully this is giving you a good foundation. You'll learn some uh, actual tactical things from Barat, and you're going to have flawless shipping and flawless logistics as you start your Amazon journey. Anh chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon. Skybox cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Vì đang tiếp brand với USBTO, từ Thailand, Ultra Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé.